When we're looking to manage our weight, working towards our ideal healthy weight, the first thing we want to know is what shall we eat? What's the best way for me to reach my goals? We read articles, watch TV programs, go to commercial groups for information and support. Ask our doctors for help and advice. But what if the core premise of that advice was wrong? What if the accepted wisdom of the last 40 years has been wrong? What if we've been focusing in the wrong place all this time? We're talking about fat, the thing everyone who's looking to lose some weight is focused on reducing at all cost. The range of low-fat food is now complete. It's possible to buy low-fat all the way from low-fat chicken to low-fat chocolate bars. It's become the main marketing slogan for thousands of processed foods and the first question dieters ask when choosing their food is how much fat does it contain? So it's fair to say that over the last four decades, low-fat foods have become a crucial part of our eating culture. In some situations, the low-fat option is now the only option. And yet, the incidence of obesity has risen exponentially over those same four decades. We thought about this and decided to revisit recent history to get the lowdown on the low-fat story. Let's go all the way back to the early 1970s, when Richard Nixon was president of the United States and facing an election. He was under intense pressure from the public to lower the cost of food. And the way to do that was to lower the cost of food production, to lower the cost of farming. A new product, high fructose corn syrup, was developed and used to replace the much more expensive sugar. In one move, the cost of processed food manufacturing was slashed. Nixon went back to the White House and high fructose corn syrup found its way into virtually every kind of processed food. About the same time, there was a heated debate about the rising rate of heart disease. After extensive research, some top professors like John Yudkin from the University of London argued that sugar was the main cause of this rise. But at the same time, powerful lobbyists from the food industry that was reaping the benefits of the cheaper high fructose corn syrup identified fat as the culprit. It was easier and certainly more lucrative for them to blame fat than to admit sugar might be the cause. 40 years ago, even though the standard diet included butter, full cream milk and plenty of fatty meat, the rate of obesity was low, but fat was given its bad rap anyway and the sugar industry enjoyed an increasing share in the massive market for low-fat products to address the problem. Margarine instead of butter, skim milk instead of whole milk, low-fat yogurts and cheese and thousands of low-fat, no-fat processed foods. The debate stopped and any attempts by scientists to do further research into the potential harm of sugar was actively discouraged. You know, high fructose corn syrup is one of the highest sources of calorie intake in today's average diet, so it's a huge issue. But more than that, it provides no nutritional value other than empty calories as being linked to obesity, heart disease, a buildup of fat on the liver, type 2 diabetes and a number of other chronic diseases. And many people are eating and drinking a diet of mainly processed food, so that even more of their daily calories are coming directly from high fructose corn syrup. The focus on fat as a direct link to heart disease and obesity has been driven by profit for almost 40 years. Thankfully, the truth of this is finally coming out and fat's bad rap is coming to an end. Of course, the sugar industry is pushing back hard with expensive advertising and lobbyists to protect its market share because the harsh reality is that the production of all those low-fat products was only possible by replacing the fat content with sweeteners. Sugar, high fructose corn syrup and artificial sweeteners are all used to make the low-fat products edible. So that the products don't taste like cardboard. And as Sarinda discussed in her video on fats, apart from the fact that every cell in our body needs fats in order to function, our food needs fat in order for us to literally feel satisfied. Although in the short term replacing fat with sugar makes the food edible, as far as our body is concerned, it's still not getting what it needs and so there's a desire to eat more. And ultimately the low fat products work against us because we eat more of them in our search for the nutrients we need. And we dramatically increase our sugar consumption in the process and we all know now where that leads to that spike in blood sugar that's part of the disruption of our biochemistry and the cascade of problems that follow. It's not only too simplistic to say eating fat makes us fat. The bigger problem is that all fats were lumped together and pronounced harmful and we threw the baby out with the bathwater. 
we now have a population with a highly skewed fat profile, actually deficient in the fats that are vital for good health. As the rate of sugar consumption has gone up over the last 40 years, so have the rate of heart disease, diabetes and obesity. Of course, we can't just draw a simple line between cause and effect here, but simple observation ought to at least provoke some serious questions. And we know it did provoke some questions, but the sugar industry has lobbied hard to ensure the discussion was kept to a minimum. That's what we're up against when we're looking for accurate information about our health. We need to dig around, ask who stands to gain from having us believe this information, and then make a choice that's also based on our own common sense. Yes, a multi-billion dollar weight loss industry has spent the past 40 years barking up the wrong tree. Built on a false premise. Whether that's sweets, chocolate, fizzy drinks or white bread, white rice or pasta, as far as our body's concerned, that's all refined sugar, feeding a deadly addiction. Thank goodness this is finally starting to leak out into the mainstream media. It's important we cut down on sugar and start eating healthy fat immediately. Not trans fat or hydrogenated fat, which we know has a bad effect on our health, but the good fats, the healthy fats that our body needs to be able to function. The essential fats found in foods such as coconut oil, ghee, avocados, nuts and oily fish like mackerel and wild salmon. They're called essential fats for a reason. They're essential for good health and they can even help us burn fat. Many vital processes in our body need the omega-3, 6 and 9 fatty acids that are found in these foods. But, like everything in life, it's obviously a question of balance. We can overdo it and we should definitely avoid the bad fats. But having half an avocado each day, a drizzle of olive oil on your salad and a handful of nuts is good for your brain, your cells and your health in general. And your weight. So let's not fall for the low fat myth and exclude good fats from our diet. Instead, let's work on our sugar consumption so we eat sugar as a treat and not as a staple. And increase our sense of satisfaction by increasing the amount of good fat we eat.